The Omega Seamaster with its white dial and black bezel is quite honestly the one watch from Omega that never really interested me. On pictures, it's just too out there for me with the wire hands, waves on the dial and weird valve at the temp position. So when my friend Chris asked me if I wanted to borrow one, I was like, sure, why not, rather than, oh my god, yes. Chris has told me on several occasions how much he likes this, and I know he has excellent taste. But it's not really until I finally saw it in person that I got it. Or to be precise, when I put it on my wrist that I got it. Like I spoke about in my recent Seamaster Bond video, the model had a fair run in the James Bond movies, and the fit is obviously being a robust dive watch that's ready for most adventures down to 300 meters depth. But what is it like to wear as an everyday watch? We've already seen Pierce Brosnan drive through buildings in a tank wearing one, but how does it fare if you're just taking a dog for a walk around a very shallow river? I'm going to cover this off today and also get stuck into some extreme close-ups of all these many intricate little details. So let's see if we can change our minds together by the end of this video. I hope you'll stick around. If you're here for the first time and like what you see, I hope you'll consider liking this video and subscribing at some point. Thank you in advance. Size is always important when it comes to watches and wrists anyway. It's a fairly substantial 42mm in diameter, 13.6mm thick, lug to lug is 49.6mm and on this Artem canvas strap it comes in at 112g. As you can see it appears slightly smaller than some of its measurements suggest and I think that it has to do with the dial itself only being around 31mm in diameter. It plays a bit of a trick on the eyes. But anyway, let's have a closer look at said dial. This dial is polished white ceramic, and these waves you see are laser engraved and incredibly crisp. I normally take this as a challenge to find any sort of minute flaw, and I did find a tiny speck of black on one of the stripes, but it's so incredibly small that you'd have to be Ant-Man to be bothered by it, so overall, amazing job Omega. Further to the crispy text and almost invisible detail of ZRO2, which stands for Zirconium Oxide, this is the ceramic material used to create the dial, and this must clearly be printed on the dial because otherwise the owner wouldn't be able to sleep at night. The printing of the model name and the word professional is incredibly crisp, probably the best I've seen outside of Grand Seiko. There is a small issue on the G of the logo, but it's not really visible with the naked eye. The various texts that Omega really wants you to know about, just about the date, is also very crisp and attractive. There's so much going on here that the date doesn't bother me particularly. It's just one more detail on an already busy dial, so no big deal. It's a little small is my only feedback. Slightly larger would be easier to see since it is recessed quite deep. All the indices are applied and absolutely stunning, with their polished sides and black frame around the loom. This is one of these watches that seem to glow just from coming back inside from the sunshine. And everything is perfectly aligned, including the difficult to nail double indices at 12. These hands are as unusual as they are cool. I just think they shouldn't work but they clearly do, and legibility is actually quite brilliant. I didn't expect to like them as much as I do in person. Having a second hand have a red tip to match the red in Seamaster on the logo is an extra little bonus. Moving on to the unidirectional dive bezel that features sapphire crystal with AR coating on both sides. I'm a diver, and you have two choices setting your bezel. Before or after you're in the water. Before means your hands are dry, so no problems. After means they're wet and getting a grip on most vessels is hard. So why would you wait until you're in the water? After jumping in, you check on your dive buddy, his or her equipment, refit your mask properly and check in with your group if you have one. So you see, two minutes or so could be lost here 
and I would much rather set my time of submerging accurately. This bezel is one of the few that I can see would be easy to set even with wet hands. It moves just easily enough to be okay with wet hands. The fact that it's black ceramic with white enamel text is a bonus on the longevity of your watch. The watch case is made from 316L stainless steel and has the classic downturned Omega lugs. The combination of brushed and polished surfaces is great looking and should hold up reasonably well to knocks and scratches. The helium scape valve adds some visual interest but it is a mostly pointless feature even to very experienced and seasoned divers, but we all know this, it is what it is. The large and easy to grip crown is well protected in its rounded crown guards and signed with the Omega logo. Overall, this is a pretty case that sits perfectly on the wrist. Checking out the back of the watch and you get a sapphire crystal covering the Calibre 8800 movement. A master chronometer means that the timepiece has been certified not only by COSC but also by METAS, which takes place after the movement has been mounted in the watch. Tolerances then are set to a very impressive minus zero to plus five seconds, which really is quite incredible. This movement also features an anti-magnetic hairspring, coaxial escapement and a single barrel with up to 55 hours of power reserve. In short, it goes good and you can reliably use it to tell the time. I had this mounted on an excellent Artem strap, which is a company out of Adelaide here in Australia. They make some of the best canvas straps in the world and I highly recommend them and I'm not paid to say that for the record. I just like their work and I will link up the site which you can click on or ignore. The loom is brilliant and fun with its two-tone effect using two different types of loom. I'll let you enjoy it here in peace. The Omega Seamaster 300 coaxial master chronometer 42mm is a brilliantly made watch with a lot of personality. And you know what? It sits amazingly well on the wrist. And this is where it really shines. I never had any interest in one and now I've almost had my mind changed and I can really see myself wearing this and not just whilst on holidays. All the little details on the dial, the well-made case. Even that pointless helium escape valve makes it what it is and it just works. Would it jump my internal cue to be my first Omega? No, that still belongs to the Speedmaster which I will eventually purchase. But it is a close second and it's also very tempting price wise on the second hand market. So we'll see. What about you? What do you think? Is this the one for you or perhaps a different color? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much again for watching and I'll see you next time.